Please explain to your unlawfully appointed boss who is unlawfully on the premises of the NCAA in contravention of the minister's orders. Please tell him I have torn up his instruction for me to leave this building. I'm an employee of the NCAA. It is him who needs the minister's concurrence to sit in that office. It is him who has sat in that office unlawfully for the past two months, having unlawful access to NCAA affairs, which is state affairs. When he disrespects the minister who reports to the head of state, the president of this country, he disrespects the president. When you, when you appoint foreigners unlawfully, you are disrespecting the laws of this country. If you cannot respect the laws of Namibia and you cannot respect the political leadership in Namibia, then why are you in Namibia? We have laws here. We want to live peacefully. We do not want to be victimized. Hmm? Are you saying you are above the minister and you are above our laws? It is the basis, yes, I'm addressing the same issue because it is on that basis. Are you saying, are you also going to send me the record? I don't owe you a record. You're supposed to be taking your own. Yeah. So if you want to victimize employees here, you must find something lawful, something legal for you to victimize us. You will not be sitting here and writing us letters that are signed by people who are not employees of the NCAA and expecting us, we are being recorded on the record because you people like to act unlawfully. Hmm? I've torn up the, the, the whatever paper because it's signed by somebody who's not lawfully on these premises. Yeah? Until you can get me you something signed. You have Do you know? have the minister's concurrence for the act? Thank you. You, office? you may lock the office, but please excuse me. I need to take my personal uh, belongings. We'll, we'll, we'll your personal uh, excuse pass. me. I need to take my personal oh. belongings. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hey, I need to take my personal oh. belongings. Excuse me. Hey. gave the green file from Elliot. He took it. He took the file from for, uh, for for the petition that has been signed by employees. Mm -hmm. Mr. Elliot and the CFO. They have Why did they take your file? They said that it's personal. I told them that the file is personal, mm -hmm. and they he grabbed it from me. Mm -hmm. I've shown him the letter from the minister, mm -hmm. and he has also defied it. So please go and get the letter, I uh, mean the, the green file with the petition and the signatures of the employees who have signed it. It has been taken, it's not NCAA property, it's yours. and it has been taken by Brent and by Mr. Elliot, Gordon mm. Elliot. Mm. To date that's about 43 years. Uh, when the NCAA was created or formed with a ball, I was called to serve on the board as deputy chairman and the chairman of the safety, security, regulatory and legal subcommittee, in short SSRL committee. That was from the 1st of November 16 till last year end of May, call it two and a half years. When my predecessor resigned and in this very room the board said and discuss the way forward. I was asked to take over, like in tomorrow morning, which I agreed to. And my position was interim executive director, not acting, yes. interim, there is a difference. Yeah. And that position I still have today. I had to vacate the position of deputy chair I had to vacate the position of chairman of the SSRL committee to be 24-7 almost on duty as IED, Interim Executive Director of the NCAA. And that's where I'm still today. Yeah. I have not appointed myself. It, I have been appointed and substantially by the board. Yeah. My so initial contract was for 12 months, ending end of May 2020. The advertisement and recruitment process for a substantive ED started last year already. It was advertised, applications were received, an external independent recruitment agency was contracted, and the applicants were shortlisted. But then the whole process through, through this uh, beginning of the year in terms of COVID got delayed, and by the end of my contract, at the end of May, no substantive ED has been appointed yet. The next logical thing was to just extend my contract, which has been done 
following the correct procedures and it has been extended for six months ending November 2020. So I'm Natalia Dapandula Isaac. Um, I'm the, the assistant legal officer at the NCAA who was recently um, uh, suspended for raising a grievance in writing. And um, so I just wanted to use this platform really to respond to what I believe is a, uh, basically an attempt from the NCAA um, management to paint the wrong picture about me as a professional and me as an upright citizen who sees something wrong and is obligated to either report it or become an accessory to it. So I just wanted to clarify that those are two different people and in any event, um, I just wanted to give my side of the story because everything that's going around in the media is one-sided, either in my favor or in the favor of the NCAA. And also just to, to, to give notice to the public that the video that is circulating of me being violent is not you know, it, 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 it's not the full picture, and the NCAA, if they really wanted to genuinely paint a true picture of the events that uh, transpired that day, they are in a position to share the full uh, footage of that particular day. And even from February, since I walked in, because they do have 24 7 surveillance over the NCAA premises. Obviously, very evidently, I'm being victimized for obviously facing a grievance and talking you know, certain authorities such as the Anti-Corruption Commission because they brought it to the attention of so many people. But before I opted for that, I followed, you know, what I believe is a fair procedure in the absence of a grievance procedure and any other policy. And I'm not only being victimized myself, I'm also being used as a tool to victimize other employees, you know, in a silent manner. Because you see, um, the internal memo that was being referred to when it was uh, sent out, it didn't come with any, it didn't answer the question of the lawful appointment of the IED. It just said that basically we are being warned to basically desist from questioning the legality of the IED's appointment, mm. the legality of um, board resolutions in that regard and other issues. Mm. And then in paragraph three of that internal memo, um, I think at the end it says there will be serious consequences. Mm. And when this memo was being shared, that's the point where I was. Um, suspended and being kicked out of the office, you know. So when you take the events of a suspension of, you know, somebody who's been at the forefront of raising this grievance, mm. you take that suspension mm. and then you consider that that internal memo went out around mm. the same time. Mm. People must now look at that suspension as an example of, oh, if I continue with this, mm. I might be next. And also when I read that internal memo, I did say that something that would follow is probably suspensions of certain individuals mm. and maybe warning letters of everybody else that can be identified. And I do think that the internal memos language also points to that. Yeah, so definitely being victimized and being used as a tool to victimize other employees. Um, can you maybe also just explain the suspension then? That, that's when her point and the other two, I mean, her and the other employee come in where you yeah. said that they're suspended. Yeah, so I was the first person that HR came to with a suspension letter. Mm -hmm. But when she came to me with my suspension letter, she had um, their suspension letters and I saw them. That is why I would tell them as I was being kicked out, that you will be served next. Mm. But, and it was a thing what management decided, mm. you know. So as I was being kicked out and uh, having seen the two suspension letters for the other two colleagues, mm. the, the, she was served, um, Jermaine was served her suspension. Um, I don't know if they went through, you know, the same procedure of under police. Was that? For, for destruction. Okay, also. Same, same reason as well. Yeah. And um, so when they got to the third person, for whom there was already a suspension letter, and prior to the suspension letters being handed to us, we were already thrown out of the system, the three of us. And when we called the IT department, they informed us that that instruction came from management. Mm. So you throw us out of the system, then you come to my office with the suspension letters, you serve me first, but I've seen the other two. Mm. You go and serve the second person. Now you get to the third person, mm. and their manager stands up for them, because they are part of the management you're talking about. Says, I'm not aware of this. Mm. I, I'm not unhappy or anything with you know, I, she works under me and there are no issues mm. that, that I'm aware of that must lead to a suspension right now. Mm. And because he stood up for her and went to question the legal department, chief legal, then they went back on, you know, they had an afterthought and they said, okay, this will be discussed tomorrow at, at, at the board. And so that suspension letter wasn't handed over. Mm. But by conduct, the fact that she has been thrown out of that system since, yeah. that is in itself still, you know, a suspension by conduct. 
uh, other than the fact that, uh, you know, other than them not having given her the letter, they've thrown out of the system the same way they did the, the rest of us. Yeah. And it's also, um, another thing is also that when these events were happening, you know, um, the server was down here and there. Um, we don't, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking deeply about the fact that the events that transpired on that day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and later, mm. the events that even have occurred before the 16th of July, you can take a whole NCAA footage from February when I walked into that institution mm. up to the point that I was kicked out. The NCAA shipping position of that footage is 24 7, mm. you know, so I don't understand why they're sharing parts of videos, half recorded videos where we clearly had HR only call for uh, a phone to record when they threw my phone down obviously because you know they were manhandling me but mm. and, and I, so I think deeply about why they share that video instead of just giving the full footage at least for that specific day mm. you know so, 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 so for me that in, um, shows an intention to just defame somebody in the meantime mm. I think to also call a press conference mm. um, being assisted by a PRO mm. that you know, you didn't follow B, they, that you appointed them as an employee, mm-hmm. or you gave them, um, you, you, you know, you outsourced. Mm. If it's employment, you didn't follow fair recruitment procedures once again. Mm. If you outsource, you didn't follow procurement procedure. Mm. Procurement act, you know, stands out there. Mm. So again, you go and do this unlawful thing just to call a press conference urgently mm. to address not the issues or the allegations raised, mm. but the individual. Mm you know, at the center of raising this grievance. I think for me, that in itself speaks volume. Mm-hmm. And there's also a criminal case that's opened against you. Um, I think that's the CFO that yes. you're um, seen also mm-hmm. kind of like tagging away in his shirt. Yeah. Um, have they said anything about that in regards to that? No, they haven't. Um, like I said, what transpired is just my phone, fell, my, my phone fell because they were manhandling me. The video went blank and you can hear HR voice in there and then that's when the person who took the recording, who is Louise Stokes, that's when she then comes on the call of HR to come and record that part where I was just aggressive. Yeah, what led to you being aggressive was, to him as well? Uh, he wasn't the target, it was just, it's two men, mm. right? And mm. it's a thing of, if I need to defend myself to either get access to my personal belongings or, you know, because the suspension itself was unfair. And you're forcefully removing me when you clearly state in your letter that you're supposed to, I'm supposed to do a handover. Mm. And now you have these two men physically trying to remove me and still calling security. Mm. So, and the whole time I was recording because I wanted to have, I didn't think I, I would be physically attacked, mm. you know? So when the phone fell and that, uh, that physical, it, it was just, I wasn't looking at who, but also the other thing is I didn't feel like the chief legal counsel was a threat to me because I know I'm physically fit and he's a pensioner. So my, my, my concern was the person who I thought would be, you know, the one that I felt threatened more by the CFO than a pensioner, mm-hmm. right? And so I got hold of him and obviously he gripped him by the neck. I didn't have control over it. I was really angry at that moment. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just didn't have control over everything that transpired after that. But for me, it was just an act of really defending myself and uh, trying to get access to my personal belongings and, and, and trying to protect the identities of the people who signed the petition that was taken out of my bag without my permission, which is a personal uh, bag as well and therefore a personal item. That petition is not actually a property, yeah. you know? So, so th- th- that's basically what happened. And I do apologize sincerely for, for, the, you know, for, for the way I behaved in that video where I was really wanting up an attack. It still looks violent if you don't know the full story and obviously I myself I don't encourage violence and that is why I'm so happy that the CFO himself opened a case because he's entitled to do that at the end of the day it's for the court to decide whether or not that was self-defense whether or not that was a reasonable use of force on their part and on my part whether or not I was provoked whether or not those events would have occurred had you not handed me an unlawful suspension and, and, and if you had complied with, you know, the procedure is called security to come and move somebody physically out of the building. Uh, do you regret the incident? I don't regret the incident. I am rather disappointed in certain individuals, such as men, men handling on women. I'm also disappointed in a management that can make a decision to come and, um, you know, having a legal department that, uh, you know, uh, advises on a substantive and procedurally unfair suspension and having management that are comfortable coming to physically throw people out of the building 
you know, without any dignity. Because even when the suspension would have been lawful, if it was any other employee, whatever other case, I still want them to just follow the procedures of, if it gets to a point where a person needs to be physically removed, mm. let it not be management that does it, because that is not what they are afraid for. Security mm. carries out those functions. Mm. And also, you, have, you must have exhausted your means to get me out willingly per your letter. Mm. You know, I must have refused to hand over mm. for you to then, you know, bring somebody to physically remove remove a person. Mm. So I, I, if, if I found myself in a situation like that, mm. other than the violence, the use of vulgar language, obviously when you're so angry, um, I really don't think I regret it. I, I've never been in a situation like that. Mm. So I don't know if I would react any differently because it's just a moment where you just don't have control over what happens, but you need to protect your bodily integrity mm. and your dignity mm. because it, it, it doesn't look good as a woman being then handled. Mm. You know, this is things that will go around for the next how many years? You know, so 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 yeah, that, that, yeah. So I'm not uh, back at work, mm -hmm. um, but also you know, there being a, a, a letter from the relevant ministry mm -hmm. is not something new. Like uh, since the 18th of May 2020, mm -hmm. the minister has been writing well in advance before this men's contract expired to say that you need to hire somebody substantively. I do not intend on renewing this. Mm -hmm. So on the 18th of May, there was a communication to that effect. Mm -hmm. On the 4th of June. Mm -hmm on the 24th of June, mm -hmm. and on all those three occasions, mm -hmm. the board has ignored the, the, the ministerial, I remember this board re uh, um, reports to the uh, ministry, mm -hmm. but they ignore those instructions. So mm -hmm. for me, this is one of those, again, instructions that, they, that, that are going to be ignored. Mm -hmm. So in light of that, um, I am in the process of approaching the High Court mm -hmm. on an urgent basis for reinstatement. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I think that's the only remedy that we really do have right now. Uh, the other thing is also that um, this is why I opened or attempted to open, because they, there's no clarity as to, you know, what happens with this case. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I really consider the, the fact that the ministry to, to whom the board reports mm -hmm. would give an order mm -hmm. that is a lawful order, not a political one, that is a lawful order per the act. Mm -hmm. And it would be ignored. A minister needs to repeat his position so many times and it will be disobeyed nonetheless. I think that really speaks to insubordination. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, this is also an issue that, you know, I, this insubordination, because it's in to, the board. Yeah, to the minister, okay. by the board, to the minister, who reports to the head of state. Mm -hmm. For me, I feel like there are so many elements other than insubordination, like maybe treason and so on, but it's not my place to, you know, raise these concerns. But I've just opened a case where I've made allegations and it's up to the Namibian police and all other relevant authorities to investigate that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it's for me to open. For me, I've just complained that there's insubordination by the board to the ministry mm. on lawful instructions. Mm. You can refuse unlawful instructions like I did. Mm. You can refuse unlawful instructions. Mm. And HR could also have refused unlawful instructions to hire without following recruitment procedures. Mm. But when it's a lawful instruction, mm. you really have no reason whatsoever to not comply. Mm. 